Hey guys, how's it going? What's up? This is Ryan Ralph, and today I'm going to show you how to fix your Windows 10 if you upgraded from Windows 7 or 8.1 and you don't like it, it's um, it's sluggish, it's slow, it seems slow, your computer now seems slower than your uh, previous o operating system did um, before you upgraded. You're having issues and it's just, it just buggy and um, all that stuff so basically what I'm here to do today is show you how to fix that now I just want to make a disclaimer really fast what I'm about to teach you guys is basically a lot of it has to do with Windows 10 specifically so I'm calling this optimizing Windows 10 on an OS level now I've already covered optimizing and PC maintenance in two separate videos um, in the past on my channel so if you want to know how to do that which by the way coincides with this video in the sense that if you do those two and you learn how to do it and you do those two frequently and then you do this on top of that you'll have a great you'll have a great windows 10 experience aside from the few minor issues and bugs that it has that will be fixed later on um, but overall it, it'll it'll greatly improve your your windows 10 experience if you do all three of them so i do highly suggest you check those out but either way a lot of this is going to be specific to 10 and this will be helping folks who upgraded from 7 to 8.1 that um like I said, their 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 machine seems slower, so I'm going to show you how to how to improve that and and make Windows 10 run faster. In this tutorial, or how to, or whatever you want to call it. Before we begin, there's one simple thing I need everybody to do. Go to your search in Windows 10, like I did right here. You, most people, when you're done, you won't have the bar. You'll have this magnifying glass when you're done finishing this video and doing as I say. But right now, you probably have a bar across the Cortana bar anyway just click on that and go into search and search for um, just type in restore and you should get this create a restore point if you don't get that the first time cl click out of it go back do it again now you may need to do it two or three times before it pops up uh, so just keep doing that until it pops up when it pops up click on it and I want you to hit create you can name it whatever you want. Um, personally, I would name it something that lets you know that this was the restore point you created before you watch this video. So something like before optimizing Windows 10. And then hit create. I'm not going to do it because I don't want that restore point on my drive, on my virtual machine. But then you hit create. It'll create the uh, restore point. And when it's done, it'll disappear. Um, and yeah, it, so this way what happens is, let's say, um, you're like, you know what, I did that guide and I screwed up something or something messed up or whatever, and now something's not working right. All you got to do is do the same thing. You just type in search for store, come back here, click on this instead though, system restore. And of course it's going to find, uh, no restore points here, but usually you click next and you click view and you can find that one restore point you made, you named. And before you made this video and then load that up it'll take like five or ten minutes to, to restore everything and uh, it'll be like you never did anything so I just 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 in case just in case I don't think we need it but I like to protect my viewers so yeah go ahead and do that guys and you'll be good to go so let's get on with this so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to get Windows 10 rid get rid of Windows 10 notifications if you haven't noticed, there's a stupid thing in here, and it's like a cell phone. And anytime an update installs or something, an app, whatever, wants your attention or whatever, you get this little uh, thing that pops up here, and it says blah, 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 and it makes a ding noise, and they're kind of annoying. I personally don't think it belongs on a desktop. I think the whole notification system is stupid. If you like it, um, this isn't going to, again, this is optimizing at an OS level, so it doesn't necessarily mean that everything we do is going to optimize your machine for speed, but it's also going to optimize it for less annoyances and things like that too, okay? So this is the, one of the annoyances we're going to get rid of. So if you don't want it, go ahead and follow along with me. If not, you can skip ahead or whatever. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to click on the start bu uh, start menu, and then you want to go to settings right here. Click on that. And then system, display, notification, apps, power. Click on that. Then go down to the second one, notifications and actions. You want to un turn this off. 
Turn this off. Turn this off. Then you want to go to turn system icons on or off. And if you see anything in here that you want to turn off, you know, while we're doing this, please, obviously, go ahead. Um, and then down at the bottom, you're going to see action center, which is this whole, controls this whole thing. Just hit boom. And as soon as you do that, you'll see, look, turn it on, it comes back. There it is, right? But as soon as I do it, boom, gone. So now you've disabled notifications and you've hidden the action center. So that's gone. You're good to go. It's that's done with. Okay, on to the next step. Cortana is not needed. It's really silly. I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's not cool. And it's just silly to me. Um, the only use I see anybody needing Cortana for is the sole fact to remind them of a set date that they set for like two weeks, a month later, or something like that. But if you need a digital assistant to remind you of a date, then you probably need a better solution to remember a date, to be completely honest. But my guess is that 95% of you watching don't want Cortana. So here's the thing. I just want to be clear about one thing. There's a Cortana service in your service menu or in the list of all the services running on your machine. There's a service called Cortana. And when you do this and you disable Cortana, you will not be able to get rid of that service. Now, there is one way to get rid of that service, except it completely disables being able to search anything locally on your computer at all okay now some of you might not think that's a big deal I don't think it's a huge deal but I still think it's bullshit that you can't that the, that the Cortana service is linked to the search service total bullshit I think that they should be separate and if you disable Cortana her service should go away um, that is not the way it works here so just so you guys know so once you do this and then you see her I don't want you to do this and then see her service running in the service list and then you freak out like well I thought it turned it off what's going on blah 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 so if you want to disable that completely you can go and google how to do that um, I'm gonna show you how to disable Cortana but we are gonna keep Windows search on um, in a sense I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that later so yeah the first thing we want to do is we want to click on in, in this search thing for Cortana and go to this little gear icon so we click on the gear icon now mine is off and by default a lot of times it does come turned off so you want to make sure that's off now this is something vital that I would say leave on because what it does is it basically um, improves search results for on device content using your search history so if you search for something like in Windows 10 for instance it's kind of a pain in the butt to get to certain things in Windows 10 so it's actually easier to go to the search thing real quick and type in for instance defrag or um, uh, disk cleanup because it's actually kind of a pain in the butt to get to those in the end Windows 10 so if you use those what will happen is once you type that in then it'll know that you want it and it'll keep that information stored so that the next time you turn it on you type it it'll pop up if you turn that off then you won't be able to find that in the search anymore so you want to keep that turned on so she's turned off by turning this off basically now what we're going to do is the next step is I'm going to show you how to get rid of the stupid bar you, it's real simple you just click on this you right click on your taskbar in, in an empty space go to search and go to search icon and now her bar is gone and it's just a magnifying glass okay and, and it's much 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 better that way is we're going to click on the magnifying glass again and we're going to go to the gear icon again. And I should have done this had you do this the first time. But we're going to we're going to uncheck search online and include web results, so that when you search now, when you search in Windows Search now, it's only going to show you local results results, and it won't give you web results, which are stupid. So we take care of that, and, and so it's good to go from there. So that's how you get rid of Cortana, get rid of the search bar, tidy up the tidy up your taskbar a little bit and all that jazz. I'm going to show you how to turn off fast startup. Now there's fast boot and fast startup. Fast boot is on your uh, motherboard BIOS level. And most of you probably won't have that option on your motherboard. If you're just a regular user and you bought your machine from a store, you chances are your motherboard's not going to support that. So if you want to, you can look into that how to do that. What that does is it basically gets rid of the splash screen and the post screen 
and allows you to get your machine loading windows quicker instead of showing you all the post stuff prior to loading windows so it's not really a big deal anyway but fast startup what that does is um, fast startup basically uh, fast startup is a hybrid boot and it's turned on by default in Windows and it's a setting that helps your PC start up faster shut down you're probably wondering well why do I want to turn that off well I'll explain to you um, Basically, Windows does this by saving an image of the Windows kernel and loaded drivers to the hybrid file on the disk upon shutdown. So when you start your PC again, Windows simply loads the hybrid file into memory, and it resumes your PC instead of restarting it. So what happens is over time, is if you have this turned on, is that over time, unless you're restarting, and when you restart, it refreshes everything, rebuilds the files again from scratch. But when you just do a shutdown and then turn it on, it's loading it from the mem loading it into the memory from the disk, and you're not getting a fresh restart, right? You're, it, it's it's not it's like you never turned your computer off, and that causes issues down the road and degradation and all sorts of things. So personally, I think it's best if you guys turn it off. That's up to you though if you don't want to. I personally think it's best to turn it off though. Um, the thing is though, is that. I can't show you in a virtual machine because my virtual virtual machine doesn't support hibernation. First, I tried it and it's because of the virtual machine. So what we have to do on here is I'm going to show you how to do it on here on, on my actual machine. So what I want you to do is right click on the start thing, on the start button, go to control panel, system and security, power options, choose what the power buttons do, Change settings that are currently unavailable right here. Okay, and you'll see this little checkbox down here. Um, turn on fast startup recommended. I do not recommend it. I know you guys are like, oh, he's crazy. It, it says it's faster, blah, blah. Well, it might save you five seconds loading into Windows, but if you don't, if you, if you just shut down your machine a, a lot, it, it, it's pointless because it's like, you know, you want to come back to a refreshed machine, not a stagnant uh, OS. So, I recommend turning it off, guys. I really do. So, you want to go ahead and uncheck that and then hit Save Changes. Now, if you don't see this option here, it's because you don't have hibernation enabled. And in order to, in order to enable hibernation, what we're going to do is we're going to keep that up. But in order to, in order to enable hibernation, you want to type, okay, the first thing you want to do is go back to the start button, right click on it, and now we want command prompt, command prompt admin. So run that, okay, pull that down here, and you want to type in this, power CFG space middle dash H space on, and then hit enter, and that will turn it on. Now, you'll want to close out of this, just refresh it, right click on this, control panel, system and security power options choose what the power buttons do change settings that are currently unavailable now this should be available now this should show up and if it doesn't go ahead and restart and do these steps again and then it should show up and you and you can um, uh, you can um, turn that on if you want the reason I showed you how to do that is because if it doesn't show up it means that hibernation is enabled which means that it's not on but for the people who are watching this, like, oh, but I want that to be turned on. I don't want to do is take his advice. I don't want to turn it on. Well, I want, you know, I give people every option. I don't want you to just have the option that I want you to have. So I recommend turning it off. But again, if somebody wants it on and, and they couldn't find it, that's why. So now you can. Now you can turn it on. Because again, I don't push my own opinion. Um, I try and help people no matter what, what they want to do. So yeah, that's, that's how you do that if you want to turn it on. Now, personally, I'm going, going to go ahead and turn mine off before I'm done here. Okay. Now you'll notice if I go back, um, that's just a personal preference. Um, but yeah, you'll notice if I go back. It's gone there. And it's gone in there. Okay, and that's what I personally want. So that's how you disable it, and that's how you enable it if it's not showing up. Next step that I want to take you guys through 
is a lot of you probably don't want a lot of the stock stuff that this comes with like you don't want this you don't want this you don't want this you don't want this you don't want group music you're probably like what is all this crap and I don't want it and you're like how do I uninstall it well there is you can actually use the default uninstaller you know all windows comes with the default uninstaller and you can use that to actually uninstall these apps but um, on, I'm going to show you the best uninstaller to actually use in any operating system. Now, some people, I won't say best, but a third, a good third party uninstaller. Because some people are going to be like, oh, Revo is better, Revo is better. Well, I used Revo uninstaller for like five years, and whereas it worked and I never had any issues with it, I didn't necessarily like it because they never, ever updated it. They never once changed the look of it or anything. It looked superbly outdated. And, um... I just felt that they, they didn't do anything to it. They just kind of left it sitting there stagnant, and I didn't like that. So years later, I switched over to IOBit uninstaller, and it's just as good. I personally like it. I mean, I don't really think either one's better, um, but I just I, it's a personal reason as to why I like it better. It's, it's I don't know. I just like it better. So what we want to do is you want to open up whatever web browser you like to use, and this will be in the description. Um, but what you can do really easily, just in the address bar, like, you know, it doesn't have to be Google, just in the address bar, just type iobit uninstaller, hit enter, and the first thing that comes up will be iobit. So click on that, it will take you to their main website, and then just scroll down until you see uninstaller 5, download free. I will, like I said, I will, if I remember, I will put the link in the description. Um, you gotta pick your download location, whatever. I always click to start it early because I hate waiting. So that's gonna download. Okay, it's done. View downloads. Okay, we're gonna run it. Now, IOBit is a decent company, and they make some good tools. The problem with IOBit is that they're really pushy, and they try to sneak stuff in here. You see this? They try to sneak stuff in here, okay? So what you want to do is you want to make sure that this is unchecked before you run this. IOBit, their their advanced system care program is okay, but you don't need all that crap. And I'll explain that, or I actually explained that in one of my previous how-to videos. What we're doing right now is we're optimizing the OS on the OS level. There's two there's two other steps to optimize an OS, but it's not on an OS level, which means an OS level means that it is catered to that OS. Okay. Um, Non-OS level means that you basically it's the same way for every single OS to do the same thing to get the same results. So there is optimizing on the OS level, and then there's optimizing on a non-OS level, and there's two steps to doing it on the non-OS level. And I've covered both steps already on previous videos, and it explains um, about IOBit and their advanced system care program, and the fact that some of the tools are good, most of them are useless, and it's just it's just way too many of them. It's convoluted. You don't need all that crap, and it's just, it's just ridiculous. So, um, you just don't. Um, so anyway, we want to make sure that's unchecked. Go ahead and run a little bit. Let it install. Okay. So we can go ahead and close the browser now. Close all, yes, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now it's open. Now, basically what this does is, IOBit allows you to uninstall programs, and you're probably wondering, why do I need this? You know, it has a built, Windows always comes with a built-in uninstaller. Well, that's great and everything, but this is better because not only does it make it easier to find exactly what you want to uninstall, you've got all your options, and it also searches for toolbars and plugins and as tools like Win Manager and blah blah blah, you can do all this stuff. Um, and here you can um, in Win Manager you can do your Windows apps, which is how we're going to uninstall these. 
you can do your startup, your um, uh, processes, and all, and, and Windows Update, and all that good stuff. Okay, and then it's got a bunch of other tools. So. So yeah, this is actually a really cool tool. The Windows Patch Cache. It basically clean, it says clean the cache generated during installing patches to release more disk space and make it run smoothly. Um, anyway, so what you want to do is since we're basically what happens is also the nice thing about this program is when you uninstall something, it lets you search for more. Uh, it basically helps you detect and find all the junk that is normally left over using the regular uninstaller, which is why I I really suggest using this over the built-in uninstaller because this lets you do after it's uninstalled, it lets you do a search and it finds all the junk that wasn't removed from the regular from the program's built-in uninstaller, and it lets you get rid of all that junk as well. So that's why I use third-party uninstallers for that for that main reason. So we're only here for the stuff that come the Windows apps, right? That's made what we're showing you. So you come down here to Win Manager and the Windows apps, okay? And you can basically just click on this one, whatever. Like let's say, um, let's say you know what? I don't want Groove Music, so we're gonna uninstall that, okay? It's gonna do the standard uninstall. And when it's done, see, it's going to go into you hit powerful scan. See, and this is all the stuff that was related to that program. These are just registry keys, but it's still important to get rid of those. So hit delete. And boom. Now, again, be careful of this because it's going to try. IOBit is really pushy, like I said. So you just got to be careful. Do not hit that. Do not hit that. Just hit close down here at the bottom. Just kind of don't rush through those menus because they try to push it on you. Um, and yeah, that's how you uninstall um, your Windows apps. Um, and then, of course, you can use this program to uninstall anything else. Recently installed, large programs, and frequently used. Play around with it. It's, it's really cool. Uh, it's a really cool program. I know a lot of people are complaining about this. They, whether they use a local account or not, they're using a Microsoft account to log into Windows 10 or a local account, but they're, they they don't want to put in a password every time they boot up the computer. They just want it to load right into Windows. Um, okay, so that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So if that's you, this is what you do. Um, you want to press the Windows key on your keyboard. It, it's basically on the left side. It's between Control and Alt, and it's a little key. It has four little boxes. It looks like it makes like a little flag. So you hold that down and press R, and then you'll get this Run box. Now in the Run box, you type in Net PL Wiz. So N E T P L Wiz. Hit Enter, and you'll get your user accounts uh, box. All you gotta do is this little thing check mark. Users must enter a username and password to use this computer. Just uncheck that and then hit apply and then hit OK and you'll be good to go so that's how you do that and then when you restart the computer you won't have to enter the password to log in even if it's a live account it'll it'll still log in automatically with your saved password to the live account so you'll be good to go there is um, turn off hard disk after to never basically I should have already had you do this but what we're going to do is again we're going to right click on the start button we're going to go to control panel, system and security, power options, um, and I think, um, yeah, we're going to, okay, so, yeah, we're going to click on, you're going to click on your power plan, whatever it is, um, hit change plan settings, and then go to uh, change advanced power settings, and then under hard, it, it might be open, it might not, but if it's not open, click on the plus. And then if this isn't open, click on the plus. See, turn hard disk after 20 minutes. If you put this to zero, it'll say never. And then hit apply, it'll say never. And then basically what what that means is, okay, let me, let me explain. While having your HDDs turn off after a set amount of time and idle, 
can help save energy. It can also cause your PC to pause while waiting for the HDD to spin back up when needed. You can either set this to never turn off the HDDs or increase the amount of idle minutes before turning the HDDs off to avoid it being turned off while you may still need it and have to wait for it to spin back up as often. Now, if you're on a, if you're on a desktop or I mean a laptop where it's battery powered, it's probably a good idea to have that on. Now you can set the timer up higher for how long it takes it to go into idle. Um, that's up to you, but if you're on a desktop, you definitely want to turn that off. If you're on a laptop that consumes battery from an external, you know, from a battery source, then it's probably best to leave that turned on. Okay, so we're done with that one. Is well, here's the thing. It's a little controversial because there are tons and tons and tons of driver programs that say, oh, you know, it'll download all the drivers for your machine and blah, blah, blah. You have to be careful with those. You have to be extremely careful with those. Um, because if it installs a driver for, for something that you don't need or you don't have or even worse yet, something that is a, uh, an incompatible driver for something, it can really ruin your day. It can really ruin your day and even days to come. So you have to be really careful with those. Now I'm not saying don't use those, but I'm I'm specifically saying use the one that I know about that is trusted. Again, it's made by IOBit. It's called Driver Booster 3. And I trust it to not download any drivers that you don't need or don't have or that are incompatible or whatnot, so on and so forth. That's the only one I trust. I know there's a crap ton of them out there, and I wouldn't trust 99.9% .9 of them. Um People download them like the candy, and I just, I cringe, because it's like, ooh. Um, so, yeah, that's the one. Now, the first thing, that's, uh, what we're doing here is we're going to try and help you get your Windows 10 drivers for your hardware. Now, your hardware might not, your hardware manufacturers, if it's really old, they might not have any Windows 10 drivers for your hardware. And if that's the case, then you're probably going to end up with issues with Windows 10 that aren't going to be able to be fixed until you get a newer machine that has drivers that fixes those issues that, that support Windows 10. So, depending on what those issues are, you may or may not be able to live live with them. Um, but we're going to show you to check, just to just make sure. So you open up your favorite web browser. Now you need to know a little bit about your computer. You need to know... Um, who makes it? So if it's a Dell or if it's a Toshiba or uh, a Lenovo or whatever, right? So let's say you have a Dell laptop, okay? So we're gonna go to Dell.com, okay? Because they're gonna provide you with the drivers. So then we go to support, and we're just gonna hit support. Okay, that's not view all support. Now I've never been to the Dell support website. And uh, it's going to be hard for me to do this for everybody, guys. I'm just giving you, I won't be able to help you out personally, specifically, but I'm giving you an overview of kind of what you need to do to get those drivers. These are the drivers you don't want to get from anybody but the manufacturer. So, once you're here, um, now you can hit auto-detect your product. Um, but what I do is... Um, Let's see, top resources, product support, here we go. So, you can view products, see if you, like, let's say I have a laptop, a Dell laptop, and let's see, it is a Alienware, and um, it's an Alienware 18. Boom, here we go. Drivers and downloads. These are all going to be the, all the fucking drivers and downloads. That, sorry for the language that you need. Um, okay. Now I like Asus site better because I have an Asus board. Now let's say you have an Asus laptop or an Asus motherboard or an Asus uh, 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 desktop or whatever. You go here again. You go to support. And then you would enter your products uh, name or whatever. And if you don't know the name or the product number or whatever, you can just try and find it. Go here. Go to, um, uh, let's see, notebooks. Let's say, let's say I have a Zenbook series. 
okay and let's say that I have this one okay Where is uh, okay? I again, I don't see. Okay, here we go. Driver and tools. Every OS or manufacturer's website is different, and it's kind of a pain in the ass to do this, guys. I won't. I won't. I will be honest. So you pick your OS, and then boom, you got a BIOS. Um, chipset driver, ATK driver, uh, audio driver, VGA driver, um, LAN driver. These are probably all Windows 10 compatible drivers when they were updated so you want to go ahead and download all of these especially if you you know just came from you just installed Windows 10 you won't have any of these installed. Um, so you want to download now the BIOS we're not going to mess with the BIOS. I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk about update, updating or upgrading BIOSes because, um, yeah, that doesn't fit in here. Sorry, guys. That's for a little bit people that are a little bit of higher level. I'm not going to break your machines. So chipset, you want to download that. You would want to download this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Now with this. With the with this with your graphics drivers, this is going to depend on whether or not you're going to need to know if your model has uh, an NVIDIA graphics card in it or not. If it doesn't, you want this one. If it does, you want this one. Um, that's going to be on you to go look at the specifications of your machine. Like we'll go to the you know go back to the page or the buy page or whatever or whatever you're going to do to find out those those specs. Um, and if 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 it, if it does have a graphics card and chances are you're a gamer, chances are you already know about that and chances are you've probably already got the drivers for it. So, because this, this guide is more so pointed towards people who, you know, gamers are already pretty much going to know how to do all this stuff because that's part of all this, right? Um, but everyone else, like normal people who don't play games and just use a computer for web, browse web, web, browsing the web and stuff, probably won't, um, know anything about that kind of stuff so yeah you want to grab up all these drivers guys um, and that's basically what how you do it I, like I said I'm sorry I know it's not going to be detailed to your specific needs and I can't I just can't do that it's not possible but that's pretty much how you do it you just if you have a Dell or Lenovo you go to their site you find your model you go to the driver page for that model and you download every single driver aside from the BIOS and you install them one by one and then when you're done, you restart the computer, and you should be way better off when you can, when that's done. So that's a huge, huge step. Is this is going to involve the page file? I've noticed that a lot of times when people do the update to Windows 10, their page file gets all screwed up, which inherently messes up with the performance. And I've seen multiple reports of this fix um, really making a huge impact on performance. Um, and giving them a lot of their performance back. So we're going to go ahead and through. We're going to go ahead and throw this step in, um, just because I know it's going to help some of or most of you, in most cases. So, okay. First thing, as always, right-click on the Start menu, Control Panel, then search for performance in the top right. Uh, no. Oh yeah, duh. Even I get confused sometimes. I've been doing this. Uh, <clears throat> my mind's real jumbled right now, actually, because this is a huge. Uh, this is a really big how-to, <laughs> and I'm doing it in pieces, um, and I gotta stitch it all together. So, I'm not doing it at all in one run. There's no way. Uh, okay, so you want to click on adjust the appearance and performance of Windows right here. Okay, uh, and then we're going to want to uh, advanced down here virtual memory, uh, which is your uh, where your page file is now. Automatically, uh, it automatically manages, and uh, yeah, you don't want that. So you want to unclick this, make that unchecked, 
Okay. Now it's going to say now it's going to recommend different sizes depending on uh, how much RAM and hard drive space and all that stuff you have. So it's going to be different for every machine. So what it's want here is uh, 1,151 megabytes, which is 1.1 gigs, give or take, basically, uh, which is actually really small. Mine's probably recommending a very small size because I have 16 gigs of DDR4. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take the recommended, whatever your recommended is. It's going to be different for everybody. You, you go ahead and click this thing that says custom size. Okay. And you just type in recommended. So you do one one by one for me, but you type in whatever your recommended is, and then maximum do the same. Okay. Again, your recommended is probably not going to be it might be if you have the same amount of RAM and close system specs to mine, it might be the same. But majority of you it's going to be different so whatever whatever your recommended is down here is what you type in up here after you select this little bubble and then of course you would just hit set and then you would hit OK and uh, that'll be good now of course you would normally restart but there's going to be more steps ahead of us in this video so we don't we don't restart yet um, but yeah that'll change your page file and uh, this is going to make a huge difference for most of you watching this video I I could change it, but I don't want a page file on my virtual machine. Plus, I don't even use a page file on my normal machine. I actually disable it completely. Because what what happens is on SSD is that if I if you designate on an SSD, which is a solid state hard drive, there's no mechanical moving parts in it, so it's really fast. But if you designate uh, the thing is, the memory on there is flash memory, and it's volatile, meaning that basically it only has a certain life in it. It can those like a flash drive, sort of. It's more advanced than that, but it's basically like that, just on a different level. But it's the same thing as far as they can only write data to those blocks of flash memory so many times, and once it gets to a certain amount, um, they die. That's just what happens to SSDs. They have a very controlled lifespan, and so in order to min minimize that that hit and, and maximize your SSD's lifespan, there there's all sorts of stuff in in all Windows versions of Windows that you want to disable. Now Windows 10 by default and Windows 8.1 will recognize SSDs, and they will change some of those settings accordingly. Not all of them, but 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 the most some of the most important ones do get changed if it detects you have an SSD, which is good. Um, so you don't have to worry about it too much, but I personally, I just like to narrow it down and make sure there's nothing hammering the SSD, especially with the page file, because what a page file will do is it'll take a specific location in the mem memory and claim it, a free location, say, okay, this these two blocks are mine, and nothing will ever be written there, else will ever go there, and that those two blocks will never get cleared. So what happens is, you, those two blocks are going to die most likely prematurely at some point years and years down the road because they've never been flushed out and they're being constantly written to. Now, I wouldn't say constantly, although that would depend on. The thing is, though, Windows still writes the page file even if you're not using up. Like, let's say you have 16 gigs of RAM, right? Windows 10 kind of sucks because Windows 10 will start using the page file at 65% RAM usage, which it's total bullshit to me. I don't know if there's a registry hack to change that, but one day I'm going to find out because I don't like it. Because it'll, I don't, I have it disabled. So when you have it disabled and you run, you you hit that low limit that they programmed. It, it, no matter what you're doing, like playing a game or whatever, something will pop up and say you have low RAM. I'll check the RAM and I'll have plenty. I'll have like five or six gigs left over at least, and I'm like, that's freaking plenty of RAM. Like, and, and I'll look at what's using up RAM, and nothing is using up an insane amount, or there's no resource issues going on. But it's just because they set that cap lower in Windows 7 and 8. The cap was set, I think, at like 75 or 80% usage, and then it would show you that message, and it would make you force close um, something. And that sucks if you're playing the game, because then you can't save it and things like that, and it just really sucks. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's page files for you. Uh, on to the next one. So, 
We're going to talk about disabling Windows Update Delivery Optimization. Microsoft decided to make every PC running Windows 10 as their uh, update server, which technically consumes your bandwidth and not a friendly feature for those people who are subscribed to an internet plan that has a daily uh, data cap limit and could highly increase your ping, uh, your ping during gaming as well. Um, yeah, basically what they did was they decided to be really cheap and say, hey, instead of like, you know, making a standalone uh, download server farm for Windows 10 or uh, increasing the one that we already have or making a new one or whatever, putting the money into it, we'll just build a, a P2P um, downloading system in Windows 10 so that, you know, everybody who has Windows 10 can uh, help seed, uh, you know, basically throw some of the data that other people are downloading. And, and you know from 10 or whatever or wherever they're at in the download and I think that's just wrong because Microsoft knows that there's millions of people that have the unfortunate doom of being on an ISP that has a data cap data caps are total 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 bullshit the only reason an internet service provider uses a data cap is because they're too cheap to update their infrastructure to handle the data and or don't have a data flow problem but just want money and are more greedy now in some cases that's the case in some cases the first thing I said is the case depending on the ISP and where they're located at or whatever it depends but those are the only two reasons I said one reason but those are only two reasons that uh, ISPs put data caps in place that's it they tell you oh it's because this because that well then take all the billions of fucking dollars that you're making and fucking make a new server farm for the you know to, to handle the new traffic it's not difficult you do it all the time I mean it, you know but they do it because they're cheap and they want to make more money so yeah so we're gonna show you how to change that so First thing you want to do, start menu, settings, and I think on this one, give me a second guys, okay, updates and security, there it is, um, advanced options, and then down here where it says choose how to update how choose how updates are delivered click on that and you basically want to turn this off so this most likely will be on you want to go ahead and turn that off okay and also if this is checked go ahead and turn this on for a second and make sure um, make sure PCs on my local network are only checked just in case if this somehow gets turned back on in the future um, it won't be a huge issue issue because it will only be local and chances are you won't have any local computers up, uh, downloading 10 so at least that'll, that, that'll kind of save you if this somehow gets turned back on but yeah that's it guys that's how easy it is to turn that off so um, yeah let's go on to the next one here SSD optimization but first things first we need to know uh, if you have an SSD or an HDD if you do not have an SSD in your system um, then this you can skip this because this doesn't apply to you okay so the first thing we want to do to check is we're going to you see this little folder down here in your taskbar okay you're gonna click on that and then you're gonna go to desktop or uh, again uh, no PC sorry not desktop click on this PC and then this is your local disk it'll say local disk or if you named it it'll be named whatever you named it but default wise it will always say local disk C okay so highlight that just click on it once and then right click on it go to properties go over to the tools tab and then go down here to optimize now this is going to bring up where you um, optimize uh, SSDs um, this will also defrag but it's it's for SSDs now if this is saying my C drive is a hard disk Drive, drive HDD, which it's not, it's an SSD. Now, I'll show you, I'll give you an example here, real quick. Um, we go in here and we go to this PC. Now, this is my main machine. What you just saw was me on a virtual machine, and I'm doing it on a virtual machine because that way it's a fret, it, because mine's already optimized, so it makes sense to actually go and actually do the settings and stuff, you know, from a 
a machine that's not. So I'm going to show you guys that in Windows 10, on my machine, it shows that yes, this is my solid state drive. C is, uh, but it's showing up as an HDD in uh, Windows 10 on my virtual machine. I don't know why. It probably has something to do with the fact that it's a virtual machine. I mean, obviously that's what I only thing I can think of, but it is an SSD anyway. So, if you have, if he says you have an SSD, okay, then that's great. Then continue to follow along with this with this tutorial. Okay, so let's assume that everybody who's following along now does have an SSD. So, what you want to do is you want to press the Windows key on your keyboard and R at the same time and when the run pop box pops up just like the last um, uh, thing you want to type services.msc hit enter and you're greeted with the services box and then you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom where the W's are and we're going to look for Windows search now I again I did it on my computer didn't I Uh, it looks like it keeps opening up on my computer. Let me try something. Okay. That's my machine's uh, info. For some reason, it... Wait. Huh, okay, no, it's not actually. Um Okay. So it's already disabled on this machine some for some reason. Huh. That's really strange. Anyway, what you want to do is you want to go to Windows Search and you want to disable that. So you double click on this, it would normally it'll normally say running. Um and what this does is it indexes everything on your computer. Okay, let me give you an explanation. It, it's basically taking all your files and it's constantly paging your hard drive, using up your hard drive resources and lifespan to constantly take any new file and create an index, a huge index file that has all your files listed. So when you go down here and you go to search for something and you type it in, it pops up instantly because it's indexed. Well, that was a, uh, that was created back in the day on XP and Windows 7 for people uh, who didn't have SSDs and in a time when SSDs did not exist. So basically that would allow your HDD, which is very slow, to access that information and pull it up almost instantly because it was already indexed and it was ready to be accessed. But in doing so it took away a lot of your performance and every other all your other day tasks because your hard drive was always doing something and um, it's it, it, it's an issue now on an SSD you don't need it because your hard drive is fast enough to bring those results up almost instantly or instantly in some SSD cases without indexing because they're that fast they can actually go find it and bring it up that fast so um, yeah, it's not needed. So normally this would say enabled like this. It would say automatic. What you would want to do is you click on this and go to disable, and then this will say running. Uh, usually you would click on this will say running up here, and you click on stop, and it would usually let you click on it. Wait till it stopped it, and then hit apply, and okay. And that disables Windows indexing, basically meaning that now. Um, it's not going to constantly page your hard drive and you're going to get a uh, better performance hard drive wise because it won't be busy all the time doing something you probably don't need. Now of course, um, of course if you're somebody who is constantly searching your computer for something, I mean constantly all the time, which is going to be very few of you, then this isn't for you. Um, but go ahead and try it because you can always come back and watch this video again to know to if you forget how to turn if you forget how you turned it off you can come back and watch it again and to turn it on it's the same thing you double click you go to automatic hit uh, hit you go to automatic and then select it and then go to start and then hit apply and OK and then it would start up the service and you'd be good to go and it would start indexing again and you wouldn't have to worry about it but give it a try 
if, even if you do so you search a lot give it a try and and uh, see if you favor the performance gain or if you did get a performance gain see if you favor it over having the search results be faster um, well they wouldn't really be faster honestly um, not with an SSD so that kind of voids itself out but whatever anyway that's how you guys do it so yeah on to the next step here next step is I'm gonna show you how to disable OneDrive um, for the ones who aren't familiar uh, one just real quick OneDrive is basically a cloud-based storage service uh, except this one is owned and maintained by Microsoft um, it comes built into 10 whether you use it or not um, I personally think cloud storage is silly I really do um, because uh, one could argue that it could be more reliable than you doing it at home if the company you choose is doing it properly because they'll have multiple 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 backups of your information um, I don't know I personally just think it's silly but that's my opinion and I, as far as I know most people who have Windows 10 do not use OneDrive so this is how you disable it if you go to your taskbar if you go over here to the right side you'll see this little arrow this usually this little box usually contains stuff that you're running um, that are that's not being used it's like minimized or whatever so you'll see here that right here here's OneDrive okay so what you do is you want to right click on it and go to settings and then go to settings tab and see this little checkbox uncheck that so it doesn't start with windows okay then go back to it right click uh, right click on it again and exit if you close one drive on around for it won't be kept in sync yeah, yeah. close one drive and it's gone that's it when you restart it won't come back and that's about as much as you can do you can if you'll notice um, you'll notice it's still here and um, yeah as far as I know there's actually no way to get rid of it here I haven't actually like looked into it uh, I guess you could do hidden I wonder if that uh... no okay so that doesn't do anything. Um, yeah, as far as I know, there's no way you can get rid of it. But the nice thing is, is it doesn't have a service that's running in the background. It, it does if you if you like open it up and you sync and you throw sync files into it and you're signed into it. But when you do what I just did, there won't be a running service from it anymore. So. You might not be able to get rid of it 100%, but it's not really a bother because now you don't have the services taking up resources. So it's basically like it's gone, except it's still there if you actually want to ever use it. So there might be a way of actually getting rid of it, but this is fine. This disables it, so you're fine. It won't bother you. It won't use up system resources. Is a lot of people aren't even aware, but Windows 10 has this area where you can go, and it's called Background Apps. And it basically allows you to select or deselect what apps are going to run in the background. What that means basically is it means that those apps that you let run in the background will update and run and consume resources when you're not even using them personally. Um, and that's a big no-no. So the first thing we want to do to get there is again click on the start menu, go to settings, go down to privacy all the way down to the bottom background apps and you're basically for me uh, a lot of these you're gonna see but a lot of them are gonna be your own stuff depending on what you have on there um, and yeah I would basically just turn every single one of them off guys I really would just just turn them all off just like this because all of these can can turn on while you're not using them and consume resources and we don't want that so uh, messaging you want to click on messaging and you also def you definitely want to turn uh, let app read or send mess to messages you want that off
Um, I mean, I don't use Skype, and even if I did, I don't think it would affect it. I, 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 I really don't, guys. Um, anyway, you can go through the rest of those, and that's pretty much all personal preference. It's not going to affect performance, but the background apps will, and that's what we're here for. We're not here to help you select your preferences. We're just here to help you optimize Windows 10 on an OS base level and get as much out of it as possible. Thank you.